Your Excellency, President Ramaphosa, and Prime Minister Luong, ministers, senior government officials, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. We will now commence with the official proceedings of the signing ceremony between the Republic of South Africa and the Republic of Singapore. The two principals will witness the signing ceremony of the two memoranda of understanding between the government of the Republic of South Africa and the government of the Republic of Singapore, respectively, on one, cooperation in the field of information and communications technology, and two, cooperation in the field of skills development. I have the honor to request Minister Kungubele and Minister Putachiri uh, to come forward to sign the Memoranda of Understanding on Cooperation in the Field of Information and Communications Technology. Thank you, Honorable Minister. So we now re to return to your seat. I have the honor to request Minister Pando and Minister Parakrishan to sign the Memoranda of Understanding on Cooperation in the Field of Skills Development. And I request the two ministers to come forward for the signing. Thank you, Honorable Ministers. You may now return to your seats. Uh, we have come to the end of the signing ceremony. I would like to thank His Excellency President Ramaphosa and His Excellency the Prime Minister uh, for witnessing this ceremony. And I now hand over to Mr. Makwenya to facilitate the media briefing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Um, Your Excellency President Ramaphosa, Prime Minister Lee, Ladies and gentlemen, we will now commence with a short media briefing. Uh, President Ramaphosa will kick us off with his remarks, then followed by Prime Minister Lee. We will then take two questions uh, from the visiting media from Singapore, as well as from the local media. Mr. President, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Magrania. Prime Minister Lee, it's wonderful to have you here. and. Welcome to 
South Africa and we're really delighted that you could accept our invitation to visit South Africa. And you visit South Africa on a very warm winter day in beautiful Cape Town in the foothills of the, table, uh, of the mountain and it's wonderful to have you here. Members of your delegation are also welcome and thank you very much for accompanying the Prime Minister to visit our shores. Prime Minister Lee and I have just concluded really wonderful discussions on a number of issues during his first official visit to South Africa. This is a significant year as we are, as the two countries, celebrating 30 years of diplomatic relations between South Africa and Singapore. It was a pleasure to discuss areas of mutual interest and explore, explore ways in which we are cooperating. And in our discussions, we were able to see the breadth and the depth of the areas that we cooperate in. And this has gone a long way to strengthen the bilateral relations between our two countries. We believe that there is significant potential to further develop our relationship and particularly the economic partnership that exists between our two countries. This is evident in the business delegation that is accompanying Prime Minister Lee, comprising of representatives of a number of sectors from their business community, including from the port sector, logistics, healthcare, biomedical, food manufacturing, and engineering. So it is a powerful business delegation. Prime Minister Lee and I will have an opportunity later today to participate in a business roundtable with all these business leaders, together with business leaders from South Africa. Our two countries share a common interest in promoting economic growth, social development, prosperity for the citizens of our two respective countries. It is in this spirit that we have worked together in a number of areas to strengthen our ties. This visit provided South Africa and Singapore an opportunity to discuss areas of cooperation that are also firmly focused on the future this includes cooperation in the fields of digitization, communication and technology, also in areas such as water and sanitation and skills development, amongst others. We've also agreed to deepen our cooperation on science and innovation as we see great scope and great opportunities where we can cooperate. This was also an opportunity to express our appreciation to the government of Singapore for their support over a number of years in the training of South African civil servants. We discussed South Africa's application to become a, second, to become a sectoral dialogue partner with the Association of Southeastern Asian Countries, or ASEAN. The global role of the Asian region has been growing over the last five decades, creating the sixth largest market in the world. Further deepening the cooperation between South Africa and Asian would open up enormous opportunities and markets for South Africa in various fields, such as trade and infrastructure development, technology transfer, education, and science, in innovation, as well as in tourism. While we discuss several areas of bilateral cooperation, this visit has also provided an opportunity to discuss regional and international issues that are of common interest and concern. These include developments on the African continent, which we touched on, in particular, how we will bring into operation the Africa Continental Free Trade Area and the potential it offers for both domestic and international investors. 
We discuss the current instability in international relations and the global economy. We agreed on the need for all countries to work together to develop inclusive, just and sustainable solutions to issues such as conflict, climate change, pandemics, and many other challenges that countries of the world are facing currently. I had the opportunity to brief Prime Minister Lee on South Africa's position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I informed him that over the weekend I had the opportunity to represent the views of a number of African leaders with regards to a peace mission that those African leaders have been talking about for quite a number of months and consulting amongst themselves okay. with regards to how Africa can make a contribution to bringing about a solution to the conflict in Ukraine and Russia. And this we have been talking about as African leaders because we concluded that that conflict in that part of the world, much as it does not affect Africa directly in the form of deaths and uh, destruction to uh, infrastructure, it does have an impact on the lives of many Africans. With regard to food security, the prices of fertilizers have gone up, prices of cereals have gone up, and the prices of fuel. Group of African heads of states took the view that Africa does need to put forward an initiative, a peace initiative that could help to contribute to the solution of that conflict. And facilitated by the Brazzaville Foundation, we've been able to have these discussions. Principal to our discussions are efforts to a peaceful resolution to the devastating conflict in Ukraine, its costs on human lives, and the impact on the African continent. And in this regard, representing various heads of government, I presented the initiative on behalf of these countries, Zambia, Senegal, Congo Brazzaville, Uganda, Egypt, and South Africa as well. The two leaders that I had occasion to speak to, that is President Putin and President Zelensky, agreed that they would be willing to receive a mission of the African heads of states in both Moscow and Kyiv. I agreed with both of them that we would con <coughs> commence with the preparations for the engagements uh, with these African heads of state. The Secretary General of the United Nations was also briefed, and so is the African Union uh, Office also briefed. So we're aiming that with the preparations that will get underway, uh, this peace mission will contribute to the various other missions that are underway to bring a solution to that conflict. My discussions with the two leaders demonstrated that they are both ready to receive the African leaders and to have a discussion on how this conflict can be brought to an end. Whether that will succeed or not is going to depend on the discussions that will be held. Prime Minister Lee, I'm grateful that we had an opportunity to discuss these and other matters of importance to our countries and to the broader global community. I'd like to thank President and um, Prime Minister Lee for a very productive deliberation and for his commitment to building stronger ties between our two countries. And I thank you for coming over and look forward 
to the discussions that we are going to have with the business leader later today. So thank you very much. Thank you, President Ramaphosa. <coughs> President Ramaphosa, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to everybody. I thank the President for inviting me to visit South Africa and for his very warm hospitality. President Ramaphosa is a good friend to Singapore. He visited in 2016 as Deputy President, and we last met in Bali in November on the sidelines of the G20 summit. And I'm very happy finally to have a chance to visit this beautiful country and reconnect with the President. When he visited Singapore in 2016, the President said that a brighter day was rising upon Africa and he invited the people of Singapore to bask in its warmth with South Africa. And indeed, Singapore is happy to be partners in South Africa's growth. South Africa is one of the largest economies in, on the continent and a G20 member. So we had a good discussion of our bilateral cooperation and within the context of the global situation and the regional opportunities in Asia and in Africa. I thank the President for his briefing on his thoughts on the situation in Ukraine and his plans for a peace mission together with other African leaders to uh, Moscow and to Kiev in order to pursue or to encourage the parties to engage in ways to de-escalate and work towards a, peace, a peaceful outcome of the dispute. I explained to the President Singapore's perspective on the war in Ukraine and how we saw it as a matter of fundamental principle that the UN Charter must be upheld, that borders have to be sacrosanct, that one country cannot invade another with impunity and cannot, it cannot be something, when it happens, it cannot be something which is acquiesced in or approved of but a clear disapproval has to be given, which is why Singapore has taken such a stand on Russia's invasion of Ukraine to oppose and to condemn it at the United Nations as well as internationally and taken targeted sanctions against Russia in this, in this objective. It's a stand which is based on principle. It's a stand which we have taken uh, regardless of who the aggressor is and without meaning that we are hostile to the countries which are participants. We remain friends with Russia, but we cannot approve of what has been done. In the same way as we, have, we are friends with America, and have been for a very long time, but when America invaded Grenada in the early 1970s, Singapore came out and voted against that at the United Nations and voted to condemn the invasion of Grenada. So it's a principal stand and one intended to maintain a consistent foreign policy based on principles and to maintain agency and an independent line by Singapore in international affairs. So I think we have a good understanding of one another and that's a, the overall framework within which we are able to pursue our bilateral cooperation. In fact, bilaterally, South Africa is Singapore's most broad-based partner in sub-Saharan Africa. Our partnership is underpinned by strong economic ties. Our bilateral trade has grown by over 60% since 2018. We have accumulated over around 13.5 billion South African rand of investments in South Africa, which is nearly a billion Singapore dollars. And there are many Singapore companies here across a wide range of industries, including agribusiness, urban solutions, hospitality, manufacturing, ports and logistics, and innovation and technology. I brought with me a business delegation comprising 17 Singapore companies to visit South Africa. And they are keen to pursue opportunities and long-term partnerships with their counterparts here. And I look forward to the business roundtable which the President and I will be holding this afternoon with South African and Singapore companies. Our people-to-people -people ties are also very important. 
We have direct flight services between the two countries. We support each other to develop our human capital. Over 1,000 South African officials have participated in capacity building programs under the Singapore Cooperation Program. And last year, we also launched the Singapore-Africa Partnership, which includes priority placement, customized courses, and postgraduate scholarships in Singapore. We hope our friends in Africa, including in South Africa, will find it relevant and will benefit from it. We can still do much more to strengthen connectivity between our two countries. More flight services, more trade and investment, more digital links, more people-to-people -people ties. We just signed, as you saw, two bilateral cooperation MOUs. The Information and Communication Technologies MOU will enhance cooperation between our digital agencies. The Skills Development MOU will deepen our tradition of sharing experiences and best practices in education and in training. This friendship has come a long way. In 1992, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew visited South Africa. The following year, our two countries established diplomatic relations. Later that decade, in 1997, President Mandela visited Singapore. And to commemorate that visit, we dedicated a giant koala tree to the president. Koala tree. The tree still stands tall and strong today, just like our friendship and cooperation continues to grow and strengthen. So I look forward to working with the president and his government to continue advancing our bilateral relationship. And the president has accepted my invitation to, visiting, to visit Singapore again, and I look forward to welcoming him to Singapore before too long. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. We will now open the floor to questions. We have open marks that will be handed over. Um, we'll start with the visiting with, with our visitors first. Paul, um, General Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Good afternoon, President Ramaphosa. Um, so we know that Singapore and South Africa are celebrating 30 years of diplomatic ties this year. I just wanted to ask. Um, uh, you know, apart from the areas of digital technology and also skills development that we saw MOUs signed in, are there any specific areas of new areas of cooperation or partnership that both sides are looking at? Well, our, official, our officials have been talking about many things. For example, we talked about uh, trade, uh, promoting new areas of trade, including agricultural business. Uh, we talked about cooperation in renewable energy. Um, and we would like to compare notes with one another also on the areas of um, how we manage our GLCs or SOEs because um, um, these are important parts of the economy. They provide important elements of the infrastructure very often and they have to run efficiently, uh, sustainably and commercially viably. And that's always a challenge and it's something which we would like to learn from one another. That's just a few of the areas which we're working on. There's well, also research and development, where South Africa has got uh, very advanced capabilities, for example, in uh, medical research, pandemic preparedness, and Singapore um, is also focused in this area and would like to keep in touch with South Africa closely. Certainly during COVID, uh, we watched South Africa's experience closely. We kept in touch with the experts in South Africa. Um, we read carefully the scientific papers which were published in South Africa. And when there were discoveries, for example, of the Omicron bias variant was discovered in South Africa and published, uh, we, we <coughs> learned a lot from what the South African scientists and medical authorities published and took a lot of comfort and reassurance that this was a team which knew what they were doing and whose words and explanations and reassurances or uh, alarms can be taken very seriously. And we hope to do more then. Thank you. As an aside, Prime Minister, you will recall that when our scientists uh, discovered or came up with the information on Omicron, despite having really come up with something that would benefit the world, South Africa was punished uh, greatly 
uh, in terms of getting banned from travel and all that. The areas where we cooperate are just too numerous uh, to really do a disservice by mentioning each one of them. But one of the things that many of us have always been willing to learn from is how Singapore has managed its state-owned enterprises. Uh, and as we go through our own restructuring process of state-owned enterprises, we're learning a great deal from a number of countries, but also especially from Singapore. I have always discuss this with the Prime Minister each time we've met, and learning a lot from what he imparts in terms of knowledge and their own experience to me. So, great lessons that can be learned from Singapore, and in a number of other areas as well that have to do with the future, for instance, in science and technology, uh, there's a great deal that we can either learn from each other or do together. So Singapore is a really wonderful model country for us, uh, and it's also a comparator, where we compare ourselves with how well we are doing and aspire to be as good as Singapore is in a number of areas. For instance, in terms of their state-owned enterprise, which manages their ports and logistics, they are possibly one of the very best in the world. So we aspire to be uh, like them. And much as with science and technology and with things like research, we are also as good as many others and they can learn from us, but we can also learn a great deal in a number of areas. So Singapore is a great partner to us. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies. Uh, Paul? Mr. President, Paul, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, Paul. Uh, Paul Becciato from Bloomberg. Um, just for, after your announcement, now, can you give us a few more details, such as who will actually lead this peace mission if that's been decided? Some kind of time frame. Um, and then, of course, if this peace mission succeeds, would that pave the way for President Putin to visit for the BRICS summit <laughs> on this one? And will Ukraine be allowed to uh, attend the BRICS summit as an observer? The foreign minister, uh, the foreign minister's meeting in the of Thank you. This process has been underway for quite a, a number of months with the facilitators who have really been uh, the Brazzaville Foundation and people from a number of other countries uh, visiting a number of capitals. They've been to Washington to discuss the initiative, to London, and to a number of uh, capitals in Europe to discuss the initiative. And there's been cautious, cautious uh, support uh, to this type of initiative. As the group of African leaders, we felt that it is important for Africa, uh, as it is also suffering a great deal on a continental basis, to come forward with an initiative. And I speak on behalf of those countries that I have mentioned. So in the end, it is the African heads of state that I mentioned who will really be leading this process. It's not really South Africa. It's collectively uh, the various president, President Sassou Nguesu, President Museveni, President Hichilema, President Sisi, uh, myself, and, um, um, and Makisal of Senegal. So the six uh, named uh, heads of state are the ones who are sponsoring uh, this whole initiative. Uh, so we're hoping that we will have intensive discussions with the two leaders, the two heads of state, and they have said that, yes, they are open uh, to having these discussions with us. Uh, as to what these discussions will lead to, we will see as the discussions uh, get underway. So it's very difficult to predict in the end what you know, the real outcome will be and how the full 
uh, ramifications will be about BRICS and all that. So I would like to say let's allow this process to get underway. It's been discussed quite broadly. And uh, now that it's reached a stage where the two leaders, President Putin and Zelensky, have agreed that this mission should be received, uh, we felt that we should now proceed. What is the time frame as soon as possible? Uh, the preparations are underway, and people are going to be paving the way and making the full preparations both in Moscow and in Kyiv uh, so that these discussions can get underway. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, next question, Yen. Good afternoon, Prime Minister, President Ramaphosa. Uh, my name is Yen Liang from The Straits Times. Uh, PM, you've mentioned uh, you want greater trade and investment links between Singapore and South Africa, and of course you brought a business delegation here. I want to know what is your pitch to Singapore firms to come to South Africa, as well as your pitch to South African firms to go to Singapore and the region. Thank you. Well, the second half is the message which we have been delivering to people from companies from many parts of the world, which is that Asia is developing, it's vibrant, it's a troubled world, but within Asia, the economies are still growing, will continue to grow, and are developing ties with one another. Certainly, that's the case in Southeast Asia, amongst the ASEAN countries. And in this kind of a great, greater environment, Singapore aspires not just to be a prosperous spot, but a node which is connected to the region and a center, where, a base where people can use us as a hub, people can use us for a headquarters, people can use us as a jumping off point, and come to Singapore, take the Singapore market, it's not so huge, but from Singapore, you can access the region. And that's my pitch to the uh, companies in Africa, because the opportunities are there, and I think Africa is growing. You would like to go beyond the continent, and East Asia is where a lot of the world's growth is. Um, the pitch to Singapore companies is uh, you are looking, we are looking for new uh, markets to open. Uh, we have traditional markets near ourselves, in our neighborhood, in China, in India, the developed countries. Those will continue to grow and will continue to be important. But in a difficult environment, we also have to find new markets. And in Africa, there are spots of uh, great promise and great vibrancy. There's a lot of energy and talent. There are many opportunities but you have to identify where they are and go for them. And South Africa is a very important economy in Africa. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Uh, it's one of the most advanced in terms of uh, its uh, IT, its financial services, its uh, telecoms infrastructure. Uh, it's not a developed economy yet, but it is working to head in that direction. And there are opportunities here. Companies which are here uh, have found niches and uh, they are um, able to grow and prosper and we would like more Singapore companies to come and explore and get to know the terrain even if we don't move straight away be aware of what is possible here so that uh, we do not allow good opportunities to pass us by because we haven't been paying attention. In many ways, South Africa is uh, positioned almost similarly to Singapore because we see ourselves as the gateway into Africa. We're the most industrialized country on the African continent uh, with a number of positive attributes like a well-developed financial services sector, a manufacturing sector, and uh, with the Africa continental free trade area, we do believe that there is a great deal that is on offer for countries and companies in the Asian part of the world. And we therefore, uh, from a value proposition point of view, there's a great deal we have to offer. But at the same time, we also, uh, as a country, offer a great platform for even South African companies with our relationships with uh, 
countries like Singapore to go into the Asian uh, ASEAN market uh, as we now want to also find some space there because there are great opportunities there as well. So using the South African launch pad uh, where we want to encourage South African companies and indeed it could also be African companies uh, to enter the ASEAN market. Uh, South Africa plays a key role in that. So the similarities between uh, Singapore and South Africa are great. Singapore is much more developed and uh, we are uh, on the footpath of following in the wake of what Singapore has achieved. Uh, so that's why we say they are a comparator country, but they are also a sister country that we want to learn a great deal from. Thank you. The last question, um, Atsi. Thank you so much. My name is Atintana from Newsroom Africa. Thank you for this opportunity to both leaders. So given the fact that, President, you have mentioned that South Africa will be looking at how to deal with SOEs, taking the model from Singapore. Now let's bring it to the electricity crisis that we're facing in South Africa. Singapore relies on import uh, of natural gas to generate their electricity. Are you going to be taking notes on how to deal with electricity here in South Africa? Are you discussing perhaps how you can bring about a solution? Thank you. Well, yes, uh, the Prime Minister did uh, outline to me that there are energy sources, largely fossil fuels, and uh, they are utilizing quite a lot of gas. And uh, our energy source, as you well know, uh, RT is uh, a mixed energy source. We've got nuclear, uh, we've got fossil fuels as in the form of coal, but we also use some gas. And, uh, we're now going, going big in renewables, such as the sun and the wind, and to a lesser extent, hydro, uh, which we get, as you know, from Mozambique. So ours is a mixed architecture, and there's a great deal to learn as well from uh, what Singapore is doing. And they are also going to be facing a future where they have to transition. Uh, because uh, the world is changing and uh, movement from fossil fuels is accelerating and we therefore <coughs> need to move in tandem with all the changes that are taking place. We are now on a path where we have said we, we do need to be reducing reliance on fossil fuels and uh, upgrading more and more uh, renewables and the renewables uh, are really opening up new uh, sectors of the economy. It could be hydrogen, uh, fuel cells, uh, could be the sun, uh, the wind, and hydro. So all that brings about a positive combination that we need to aspire to uh, for the future. So yes, Singapore teaches us a lot and uh, I hope they also learn a lot from our mixed architecture of uh, energy, much as we are going through our own challenges right now with uh, the energy uh, challenge that we've got with load shedding. Uh, but uh, we will get on top of that. We will solve that challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. We'll now come to the end of this media question, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellencies, you may take leave of us. And thank you very much uh, from the colleagues in the media and the ministers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.